CHA's Reconnect with Rockers, and I'm actually connecting for the first time with um, somebody that I've been a fan of for a long time. So, uh, Maddie from Rev Theory, welcome to Reconnect with Rockers. It's great to see your face. Oh, you too. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to start, I'm just going to start out of the box talking about how I always think it's so brave for a band to evolve. Sometimes yeah. it's easier to just be like, you know what? I'm out. We're starting a new band. And yeah. um, you guys really, this has been a year. And I think if, this is, if there's ever a year to sort of have a band rebrand, this is the year. Now, yeah. you and Julian have always sort of been the nucleus of the band. But talk to me a little bit about um, when did you know that the band was changing? Um, it actually happened a while ago, and we just kind of, we fought it for a long time. Um, Julian and I had moved to LA around 2012. Um, and around the same time, uh, Rich got married, and then he started kind of, you know, slowly uh, drifting away and, and getting more into that married life and talking about having a family and stuff. And he wanted to focus on that. And, um, you know, back in the early, two, uh, you know, 2010s, Julian and I started writing a lot of music and producing on our own. And I was singing all the demos and the sound just kind of to, this, the sound started to morph a little bit. And we were like, what is this? This is super cool. And some of the stuff we'd have Rich sing on and made it on albums, but some of the stuff we just were like, this isn't really working. Like, let's put it to the side. And then, um, you know, over six or seven years, we developed this different sound and we're, we were experimenting with electronics and programming and all kinds of different stuff, different styles, different vocal styles, um, adding more of a balance, almost like a hip hop feel to certain things. And, um, you know, eventually Rich just, dipped he was like you know what you guys take the reins and he gave us you know he gave us his blessing to do whatever we wanted really and so julian and i reconnected last year and we were like what about all these old songs that we you know have on a hard drive um and we thought it was a travesty to just have them sit on a hard drive for eternity so we were like let's just start releasing stuff and see what people think and people reacted really positively and uh, we were just like, all right, well, let's run with it. And we experimented with some different sounds and we're still kind of evolving the sound. But, um, you know, the newer stuff is definitely that evolution. And, you know, just having a different vocalist because my, my vocal timber and the way I sing and my kind of flow is a lot different than Rich's. So immediately it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of an yeah, evolution. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I, I consider myself a little more diverse of a vocalist, so we're, it allows us to experiment with some different sounds and whatnot. So I think we're just going to keep keep going with it and see where we can take it. I was going to introduce you, you know, as, you know, bass player now and lead vocalist, you know, because yeah. you're taking on that, you know, that bass play. And there's so, I love bass playing lead vocalists are in some of my favorite bands like Thin yeah. Lizzy and Rush yeah. and if Paul McCartney and Lemmy yeah. and, you know, Tom from yeah. Slayers. So it's not an uncommon thing. You know, uh -huh. you look at, you know, a lot of these. So is that, is that, so is that's going to kind of be the course, I guess, um, for you being the yeah. bass playing lead singer now? Yeah, a little bit. And I'm also a multi-instrumentalist, so yep. I can kind of bounce around. You know, I've played a lot of the guitars on some of the newer stuff. So, you know, I play rhythm guitar. I can play drums. Um, I play, I dabble on keys. So, you know, I can bounce around. And I think uh, however we make up the band will be kind of similar. Like, let's let's have fun with this. Like, I've always wanted to do something where, you know, I'm playing guitar and then, you know, the guitar player switches to bass or keys or whatever. And then like, maybe I jump on drums and the drummer comes out, like who knows where we can go with it. Um, I think, you know, when we do start playing shows again, it, we can have a lot of fun and just really, really uh, turn it up. And are you surprised? I love the fan comments, you know, cause I always follow oh. you guys on social media and the fans are really into it. Like the yeah. first of all, the fans were really happy that you guys are back making music, but then, they were sitting there like t talking just, you know, amongst themselves, you know, on one uh -huh. board I saw and they were just like, I love this sound. You know, yeah. this is the band we love. Like they've been so embracing. And again, I think it's a very brave thing to do to be like, Hey, look, here's where we're taking our band. And people always think of you guys as a, you're such a, a new band, which is, which is great because, you know, it's still, there's yeah. still such a freshness, yeah. but you guys have been together a long time. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, our first album came out in 2005. So, you know, we've been going at it for a minute. I mean, we did take a little bit of a hiatus there um, over the past few years, but um, we're back and better than ever. But yeah, I was, uh, that was one of the most nerve wracking things for me was putting myself out there. You know, people see Rich, they know Rich as the front man. And he's got a mm -hmm. very, like, you know, familiar look and sound. And, uh, you know, it, that was, that was a tough one for me because, you know, I've never been out there as the full lead vocal. You know, I've done a lot of vocals on the albums and maybe had one or two featured songs, but, uh, to come out and be like, hey, I'm the singer was. Yeah, and you're, like, out, you're front, you're out in front. You're the front man, you're yeah. the guy in the video, you're out in front now. And, yeah. um, and people are, you know, look, people all, they, everybody knows the best, everybody knows best, everybody has their opinions. So when yeah. you put something yeah, yeah. new <laughs> out there, you know yeah. that people are all gonna be like, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. You know, it's usually when people are giving an opinion on something new, it more veers to the negative than the positive. So when yeah. I see so many positive comments, right. you know, it has right. to be really right. reinforcing, you know, for yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, that was so reassuring for me that people were positive and there was so many up likes and like, very few down likes and people yep. are like well, it's rich but then it's like oh this guy's awesome like i love this new sound and whatever. there was like a comment where like where has maddie been as lead vocalist <laughs> for all these years or something like and i was just like yeah. bam well that's a fan yeah you know Those are the ones and i'm just like whoo like that's so so nice to hear so, yeah that's stressful so absolutely mm -hmm. um so talk about the merging of different sounds too, you know, because there's a lot of flavors, a lot of textures on the songs that I've heard. And also talk to me about, you know, it's kind of different for bands and a lot of bands are doing it this way too, releasing things kind of song by wow. song and not having a whole finished product yet. Um, has that been a positive experience for you as an artist? It has. And it's something we've talked about for a long time. We, cause, because of streaming and, be, well, it all started when iTunes was doing, you know, people were buying single tracks. So kind of went back to this, shifted back to this old school single driven um, release schedule. And we just over time realized that if you put an album out, it's hot for a minute, maybe a couple weeks if you're lucky, and then people forget about it. But if you're releasing content constantly, then you're always in the focus, you know, you're all, always on people's radars. So we decided, hey, you know, we're doing everything ourselves. It's, it's all DIY um, from recording to making the videos to um, even some of the artwork we've done ourselves. And talk to me about the freedom of that too, because there's yeah. got to be a little bit of a, oh, you know what, yeah. we can kind of do this a, a, more of a creativity yeah. Um, a lot of artists, you know, the one thing you're always looking for bright spots in such a non-traditional year, but yeah. I have had artists tell me that they have felt a little bit of a sense of freedom, um, mm -hmm. you know, while being creative. And, um, yeah. I would imagine that you have felt that also. I have, I have, um, it's allowed me to pull from my roots. Um, you know, I, I grew up playing punk rock and ska and, um, you know, obviously in my early years, grunge, you know, grunge and hip hop. And, um, you know, I've been able to pull from some of those things and then some of the more electronic elements of stuff I like, um, like, you know, a lot of that trip hop era music, Massive Attack, um, mm -hmm. God Lives Underwater. And, you know, of course, you got Nine Inch Nails, Prodigy. Um, so we've kind of pulled from all those places because it's just, you know, we don't have to be locked into this certain you know, sound or way of thinking. Um, so yeah, uh, this year and last year, at the end of last year when we started doing this, um, it was all about like, let's throw the rules out the window. Let's just do what feels right. And, um, you know, from everything from the music to, to the business side of it, so. And it still sounds like Rev Theory. Like it's still yeah, you, exactly. it's still your band, yeah. you know, but it's still got that great progression. And you mentioned artwork. Mm -hmm. And I get the feeling, you know, because the band's always kind of had this kind of arty thing yeah. behind you guys. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine that that's going to continue and probably even get a little bit larger. Yes. I, that, that's the idea. Um, you know, we wanted to do stuff, um, you know, since every single has to have a thumbnail, you know, artwork for it, we were like, well, like, 
let, how's this going to look on a t-shirt or a poster or a vinyl? Um, a visualizer video, you know, because people are yeah, putting out all exactly. different yeah. ways to do stuff. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we wanted it to be very art-driven. So um, Julian got into a lot of visual art stuff and he put together a visualizer and he did some weird trippy art stuff that was really cool that we used for some of the early stuff that flew under the radar. It wasn't as big a release as Remember Me. Um, but he, he experimented with some stuff and then I enlisted some local artists here in San Diego that I thought were really cool. And I think we just want to keep doing that. And also working with other um, music creators and producers that we like as more of a, a counterpoint or a collaborator as opposed to just like hiring someone to produce your record. So, you know, we really have enlisted people that we are friends with or that we respect. Uh, and I think we want to keep doing that. Um, we're going to start featuring a lot of artists, um, you know, not far from kind of what a, a hip hop group would do. Um, you know, I'm going to have, a, we have a track with uh, Heidi from Butcher Babies. She's going to feature on a song. I heard um, that. I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. And I was like, yes, they're bringing in, they're bringing in one of the ladies. I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Because we had, we had written with them in LA for one of their records. And then we were this was at the time where we were really experimenting with these different sounds. And we had this really cool track uh, that we actually collaborated with uh, Brandon from Atreyu. Oh, wow. He, he came up with some guitar riffs for it and we co-wrote that. And then I, I at the time thought, Hey, what if we get Heidi to scream on this? And then she ended <laughs> up writing, she ended up writing a second verse for it. And it's like this cool, like trippy, weird, just, all over the place track it's really awesome. cool it's awesome. definitely heavy it's definitely heavier than a lot of stuff we've done so that's cool but then we've also worked with some artists where we're writing a lot lighter stuff so you know i have this cool kind of ethereal electronic song um some other stuff that's a little bit out there so you know we we plan to kind of go all over the map with this nice nice talk let's talk to you a little bit about remember me which yeah. is, you know, great, a fan favorite, you know, uh, again, I love to see the comments from fans and the fans were just like all over this track. They mm -hmm. loved it. Um, talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for the song. Yeah. So Julian and I originally um, came up, I, I came up with that riff a while ago, uh, probably about the time I moved to LA and um Julian and I sat down and I was like, I have this riff. It's really cool. It's a little different than anything we have. And um, he kind of came up with this, remember me, remember me. And it just evolved into the story about at the time, it was shortly after we had um, left Interscope Records and we had some inner band turmoil with our management and the label thing was a little bit of a blow to us. Um, but we were kind of talking about um, our roots. So our first album, True This Currency, we had this sound and, and a lot of people, a lot of the rock bands in the industry were, were like, whoa, who is this band? You know, they, it, was, it was cool. It was, it was a little different of a sound. You know, Rich had a powerful vocal. The roots were really cool. Um, and that kind of changed a little when we signed to Interscope Records. They kind of pushed us in a way that we might not necessarily have gone if, you know, they weren't involved, um, which is fine. I mean, that's just, that was our course, but we were like, remember when we were truth is currency and remember when we were this more artistic band and a little less corporate than we kind of transformed into. Um, and we wanted to bring that back. And it was kind of about me and Julian. It was like, remember me, like we, you know, left the reservation we took the chance on this thing you know we we jumped in the van and we did it and um but you know we're still here and we still have something to say and i think that's a big part of it and i think a lot of people probably connect with that like sometimes your course steers you in a way that you might not necessarily want to go but then you're like what but wait i to my core i'm this person you know yeah. i have yeah. something to say and you know i have art to make and uh, i think that's just kind of where we were speaking from yeah your authentic self your authentic yeah, self kind exactly. of coming Exactly. Coming back, coming back into the music. Um, yep. And you guys are, you guys are Northeasterners, right? There's always that Northeastern kind of swagger, right? Are you a Philly guy? Yeah. Philly guy? I am from Philly, yeah. I grew yeah. up in Montgomery County, uh, in a little town called Hatboro. So okay. not far from Jersey. Yeah, right. Um, 
Yeah, and then Julian is the one loner. He is actually from Vancouver, Canada. Okay. He's, he's Northwest, and we're all Northeast. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, we start the band. The final formation of the band was in New York. Um, we spent some time briefly in Long Island before we hit the road, and then kind of traveled around this place for years and years. And uh, but yeah, uh, the myself, Dave, and Rich were all from the Northeast. Yeah, that northeastern swagger that you just yeah, can't yeah. you just can't fake that. Attitude, and yeah. you guys have always gotten a lot of action too from action, whether it's the NHL or the WWE. And you know what yeah. I always say, you know, those strong brands don't pick crappy bands and tunes to yeah. represent them. You yeah. know, it's a big deal. So you know, is voices like your free bird? Is that like when you guys are out or people like, <laughs> yeah you know voices you know because how how does one get a a wrestler to have their tune as their theme song you know like a theme song is a big yeah. deal for someone so is that something that you yeah. guys don't know about do they tell you to write about do they tell you you would like you to write for him or is it yours <laughs> you know how does that happen that was uh, so we had done some stuff with the wwe they used our they love you guys yeah, yeah. We used a couple of our songs for WrestleMania and some some other event promos, uh, and then they approached us and they said, "Hey, would you like to do? You know, we're looking for a new song for Randy Orton." Um, and they have a guy. They have a guy that produces and writes a lot of their music, and he was kind of a collaborator. He's like, "I have this idea, you know, voices," and he sent us the idea, and then we kind of like took it and like did our thing with it, and um, that's just how it happened. They they approached us. So uh, it's, it's really, it is kind of the free bird. People are like, it is. Uh, yeah. I would imagine, you know, yeah. like, voices. And you have, have your moment too, where you've been maybe at a sporting event or watching something. And then all of a sudden you hear your music, not yeah. knowing, yeah. you know, that it was going to be oh, played. Sure. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a, I was actually at a Philadelphia Phillies game and uh, with my girlfriend and I'm like, wait, that sounds like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, I think it was lighted up. I can't remember. That's great. It was so long ago. But a lot of times I'll get messages from people with like video, like, hey, they're playing your song. You know, they're at a football game or hockey game or whatever. So Amazing. That's, that's amazing. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great feeling. Um, so talk to me about the band too. I would imagine you guys are probably thinking of or talking to people that are going to be in the yeah. band, going to be part yeah. of, of Rev Theory. Um you know, not looking for any exclusive, exclusive, if you don't have one, but you know, you guys are talking to, uh, to potential members. Yeah, we, um, we had been jamming with a, a crew out, out in LA for a little bit. Um, just fellow musicians that we really dig. And, um, there's this two piece band that's super cool. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to drop any names because we don't totally know who's going to be in it. But okay, we'll probably, fair you know, enough. Those guys, you know, we we had kind of been jamming some of the rev stuff in the past, um, just to kind of see what it was like. And uh, I think we'll we'll kind of tap some of those guys, but we'll see. You know, it could evolve. You know, we've been talking to some people about adding that electronic element. So maybe instead of having like a second guitarist, maybe have someone doing you know keys programming. That I love it. Love it. So yeah, there's there's definitely some people we we would lean on. There are some people we'd like to bring in, but you know, some some of our friends that are amazing musicians are in demand. So you never know if they're going to be available or not. So we'll see. I love it. I love yeah, it, it's uh, Maddie. It's been it's been awesome connecting with you, man. Uh, I, I can't wait to have you back on as tunes come out too. You got to come back on with me, you know, in a couple yeah. of weeks, and, and and we'll chat if there's any uh, further news with the band. Um, yeah. But I'll tell you, Remember Me is just such a great tune. If, if those you. of you who are watching and listening, if you haven't downloaded it yet, please check it out. Just really super cool. And I can't wait to see what 2021 is going to be like for the band. I think it's a yeah, super exciting too. time for you guys. And um, congratulations on being the Brave Thank Ranger, you. man, and, and forging forward and Thank saying, you. you know what, it's our, it's our evolution time and we're taking this by the reins and we're going to run with it. Uh, Maddie from Rev Theory, the the vocalizing bassist. Thank you so much for being with me on You're Reconnect. Welcome. It was a Thank pleasure. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full-service locksmith.